Hello, everybody. It is Deb. <laughs> Sometimes I get tired of answering the same way or saying hello the same way. Hello. Oops. Guess I better put my glasses on. Bonnie, you didn't remind me. <laughs> She was so cute at first, she would remind me, because I'd be sitting there trying to squint into the camera. So, hello, Miss Susan, Sonia, Marsha, um, Bonnie. Oh, it's so good. to Kathy Klein, hi, sweetie. It is so good. Marsha, I think I already said it again. I apologize. It is so good to see you all again. So, hi, Miss Polly. Yes, I'm going to have Polly come back over this weekend and do some more sewing. Now, what did I do? Oh, I see it. I, well, I'll go ahead and show it to you now. I'll show you what we're working on Thursday nights. Okay. Oh. All righty. We're working on the Misty Woodland. Hello, Char Charlene Lawson, hon. We're working on Misty Woodland's quilt. And this is really, yep, I got your email, Polly, and I, and I messaged you back and said, maybe Thursday morning would work this time, late morning. But um, um, we're working on Misty Woodland's. And what this is trying to teach us is using color, value, hue, tint, to show distance, to show shadow and light. And then we're going to take tool and put over to make it look that misty look. Now, I got to a certain point, and I haven't moved farther, because I put an order in at Missouri Quilts for two yards of greens that I think are going to make wonderful leaves. So I've done all the background stuff, and I'll show it to you now. Hello, Barb Smith. I remember Barbara. And Barbara, did, did you already join? I'm trying to remember. I invited a Barbara to join, and I was wondering if it was you. Laura, hi, sweetie. Okay, here is my Misty Woodlands so far. And this is almost all just fabric. I've only used just a little bit of tinting. So, anyway, it's coming along, and you see I'm doing, I'm doing little tricks to make it look like it's got depth. So, there we go. So, I'm hoping I can talk you in. Oh, I worked on it. Thank you. I worked on it Friday, Friday for about six hours. I wasn't in the mood because, you know, people say, well, how do you get inspired? And I used to think, well, I couldn't really do it if I didn't get inspired. But you know what I found? If you just sit there and start, start with the small things. Before you know it, you get doing more and more and more. And, oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I'm thinking it's it's showing that depth, and it's showing the open woodland behind. And so, you know, I've got a few things I want to work on. The one thing I want to remind you, you work on these things flat, so you see them at an odd angle. Make sure. I always take it upstairs hang it up. I use a quilt hanging on the wall in the, in the room we, living room we spend time in. I hang it up on that, and that way I can keep looking at it. And by looking at it, and every time I walk by, it really helps you see things you wish you would do differently. And so that, that to me is very important. So when I work on a quilt, I take it up with me and live with it for a while. And that really helps me in my editing. I just wanted to show you that I did the golden threads pattern so I can lay it on top. Because especially when I do the branches that are going to be in front of the bright woodland, 
I need to remember the placement. And so I did do my golden threads pattern. All right. Oh, you finished the Tesco. Good job. We missed you, Miss Susan. So the tool, okay. The tool is like a fine netting. And it's like fine netting. They use it for weddings and things. And here is some white tool, and it's T-U-L-L-E. And it's one of those odd pronunciations. But that will go on. In fact, let me show you again. I'm going to need to pull back the leaning tree branch. Once The reason I, I haven't done it yet is because I've got a few adjustments to make in this area. It's, I'm not overly happy with some of this. I think some of my colors are a little too dark to use in there. So once I get all of this happy, then I'll pull this back, put on my tool, T-U-L-L-E, put it on, and then I can come put the tree back and put the, the leaves that are going to come over. Like I even need to pull these back before I put the tool on it. So I hope that makes some sense. But one of the things I said, I knew this was going to be more work because I wanted to use fabric to do everything I possibly could. I love how the light area shows in between the trees. And for me, it's editing not to cover up too much of that. So that's what I have been working on trying to get all the layers. One of the things I don't like is this here is too light. I don't want it competing. So, and on the original that I used, it did have a little shaft coming in here and there, but I don't think I can make it look right without taking away from the look. So it's a constant thing of editing and I have pulled more fabric off. I've got some areas or four layers of fabric deep, but that's that's part of what how I work. And uh, I never know until I know. <laughs> it's kind of like an adventure. Where are you going to end up? So because I worked on that, I've been working on that so much. I haven't gotten any further with my um, crumb quilt. And I want to get this done and, and show you how to play with all the different settings. But it's probably going to have to wait, wait till next week. And can you believe it is the 1st of August? And I haven't even completed any of my summer crafts. I've only started a couple of them. So... I'm going to be busy this week. Oh, thank you. I, I'm trying. I feel like I'm running behind. And you know what? Now with the resurgence of the virus, I wanted to go see some movies. Move, going to the movie theater is how I reward myself and take care of myself. That's my Deb thing to do. Well, I'm afraid. I mean, at the movie theater, I'm going to want popcorn and, and a drink. And you can't wear a mask and eat popcorn. So I told Mark, I'm getting a little nervous about going to the movie theater. Because I don't want to have a breakthrough infection. Even though it'll be milder. And I don't want to be, become a car carrier. And so we need everybody to go get their vaccines. So we can get rid of this dumb virus. But anyway, so what I told Mark is... Could you set up the hammock in my sunroom? So I'm going to take some time where I go, I need some, a few hours for myself. I'm going to climb in the hammock. I'm going to put a nice soft blanket. He's already got it set up, but I'm going to put a nice soft blanket and a sheet and a pillow. And then I'm going to take a good book. I'm going to crawl in the hammock and I'm going to read and nap and read and nap. And because, uh, you know, I just have to do a little something to take care of me. Let me tell you, it's, oh, who's anniversary? I would love to know. Betty Middleton is here. Oh, 
in Los 79th. That is amazing. Oh, happy anniversary to them. Yeah, I have to take care of myself because last night I wasn't feeling good. I felt like I had a cold. My head is so congested that I am having a hard time hearing. So, it's like, okay, that's a warning sign. I need to take a little, pull back just a little. But sometimes these unfinished projects get calling me so loudly that it's like, stop. <laughs> so I just have to realize I can't. This year, I really want to just get things finished. It's really hard. And I'm going to try to be a little easier on myself. You know, Susan and I both know how hard we work to try to meet deadlines and stay up with everything. But, you know, we can't always do it. So he pulled. Oh, oh, I bet you, oh, I mean, it's just awful, and the worst, remember I told you um, this past week, I had terrible ear infection, I thought it was an outer ear infection, turns out, my, I have incompetent eustachian tubes, okay, when the doctor told me that, I thought, how dare you, <laughs> but anyway, my, it's so easy for me, my whole head to just, ugh. And I hate it. I can't hear. I keep sounds that I do hear bother me. So I'm on decongestants. Nikki, is it Nikki's birthday? Oh, 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 oh. Melissa Lamb made it here. Yay, Melissa. We're so happy to see you. <laughs> well, the problem with camping in the backyard, mosquitoes are terrible here. We live right across the street from a pond, and we have a very wooded lot, and the humidity. And I'm spoiled rotten. I want my air conditioning. <laughs> so um, if I can't get to my favorite lake, then I'll be in my sunroom in the hammock. I'm going to take a picture this week and show y'all. So... But, oh, it's so good. I'm loving seeing how many people are here. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, you just, I'm sorry about your allergies. And I hope your friend Bonnie is doing good. I hope he's behaving and, and following the doctor's orders. It's not fun. But, so, I'm going to start out showing you something. I've got... A lot of my yellow. Remember, I took a gold, a nasty gold cuff. I was looking to see if my other one's down here, but I'm not seeing it right off hand. But anyway, I covered this with fabric and then a sealer. And then I bought this one. And then I made this. Remember when I was working on the ruche things? Well, I made that and I said, I'm going to wear it. So, I'm kind of excited. It reminded me of why I like ruched items. And so, speaking of ruching, I showed you the pen that I made five or six years ago that I wear at Christmas time. And remember, if you have any little scrap of fabric, you can ruche. And very easy. And then this one I made. Remember, I started this one last week. Well, now I have finished it. So I think it is really, they're really, really pretty. So, speaking of ruching, I'm going to show you once again a little bit of how do we ruche. Because you can use, make ruched flowers to put in quilts. You can take ruching and put it on clothing. You can take a you can take trim whoops all right here we go all right so i'm going to come underneath what this is it's a piece of fabric that's folded in then in and this one's it's not quite an inch let me see let me see how close up to an inch it is it might end up being an inch Oh, it sure is. It's an inch, and you can make them as narrow or as wide as you want. 
um, let me give you a little hint about the fabric. Okay. The fabric. Hold on. Just I do have this. This is the fabric that I used to make this. Okay. Now, one thing I want you to know. Happy birthday, Nikki, sweetheart. Alexis is here. Cheryl Hogan. We've missed you. So good to see you. Okay. So this is the fabric that turned out to be this one. So one thing I was realizing is don't, you can use any kind of fabric you want, but this time, oops, I dropped my thread. This time I said, pick a patterned fabric that's not quite as busy, okay? So, oops, let me move this back so we can see what we're doing here. All right. Let me get my needle and thread straightened out after I dropped it on the floor. So, I starched, I starched this, and this was probably two inches wide to begin with, then fold it in, fold it in, pressed good. Then I'm going to take, and I've got a double threaded needle, and I chose black because the background of this is black. I'm going to come under this little section just to bury the knot. No big surprise, just bury your knot. Then I'm going to come over, see I'm on this side. I'm going to go to the back side, and I'm going to make three big stitches diagonally across. Now, you can take a ruler put it along the side of this and mark an inch, every inch up this side, offset an in every inch up this side. But I've made two of these this last week, and I'm pretty good with guessing. So now, let's make sure. Oops. Okay. Hopefully I can scrunch that. Now that I've come over the edge, see it, the little thread came over the edge. Now I'm going to do about two or three stitches diagonally up to this side. Always make sure. I did wax this thread, so it better act right. It is so humid here today. The windows are just all steamed up. We had some rain, and it's just so humid. And I think it makes the thread act up when it's very humid. Okay, hold on. Come on, thread. All right, so then I pull it through. Don't wait too long to pull it through because, you know, with some things, when you gather you can wait and gather it all at one time, but this is not one of them. Since you're sewing diagonally, it just gets everything just a little wacky. And you can even see where I've put wax on this thread. I can see just the coloration, but it still got a little tangly today. So let me get it straight. The nice thing I love about doing this show is I can show you what can go wrong and then how to fix it and if it's important to fix it. And this, since I just started this, I don't want this knot right now. So, but I, I actually did everything right to try to prevent it, but it is so humid. I've got two fans on down here, and I'm in the basement. Normally, it stays pretty chilly down here, but the air conditioning cannot keep up with the humidity today. But we needed the rain, so I'm not going to complain about the rain. Anyway, and then this morning... I finally realized I have to have my ice water. I am really hooked on ice water. And I don't like tap water. I don't like city water. So I like to drink the filtered water out of the refrigerator. 
So this morning, I first thing I do when I get up is I take my big cup and I go over to the refrigerator and I get some ice water. And boy, that I think I told y'all that my refrigerator, we found that the compressors starting to go bad. And he said it was just a matter of time. Well, the refrigerator we found we wanted is out of stock. You know how everything is, they're having a hard time with everything. Being on ships or behind in factories. Well, this refrigerator is out of stock everywhere I looked. And I really wanted that one for several reasons. One of them... Now, see, it just made another knot. I got the knot out, and it did it again. So let me just show you the stitches. I'm not going to sit here the whole time and untangle it. But luckily, it's at the beginning. So if, that, if that's going to stay there, then so be it. All right. So now, here I've, I've stopped near this edge. I just go over the edge, come underneath, do two or three Big stitches. You want big stitches because if they're too small, then your flowers will just not have the fullness that you want. They'll look too forced. Okay. So this time I ended up on the top. So I go over the edge and come up under. And I want to do enough to show you this time. I, well, I really do need to come back up at the top. I always like to, I like to be very uniform with how I do this. All right, so I'm on the top, so I have to go over that edge, come up underneath, and back over I go, and come up. Then I'm going to go over that edge. I'm going to go over this edge come, so I can come back up. And do three stitches back. So I'm just kind of making a bunch of zigzags with my sewing. Okay. Now I'm up top. So I've got to come around the edge. So I come back. Come around that edge. Come up from underneath. And I zigzag back over here. Okay. So now... What I want to do is show you, once you gather, and always gather it every few stitches, don't wait till the end, because since you're going over the edge, it becomes a little trickier. But now do you see, do you see how that this is working very well, because the pattern is big enough, and the background areas are big enough that look at that so I think I'm gonna like this pen and I'm gonna make a brooch out of it and you know what um, I can wear it with something pink something blue something green and I could even wear it with this it's got a little yellow in it so once I do the ruching stitch all the way down to the end. Whoops, hold on. I'm trying to learn. Don't yank on the camera. Mess with the stem there. Okay, so once I get this all ruched up, then I can decide if I want to use any of these wooden beads to decorate the top or I could pick smaller beads. Or I could pick metallic beads, whatever I want. But after I get all this ruched up, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to form a circle with it, leaving the pretty little petal shapes on the top, like I did with this one. And like I did with this one. And you just kind of wind it, and you lay each row behind the row in front of it, showing at least half of the ruching so you see how that and this one was made with a lighter fabric than a darker fabric for the outer ring so i could take a solid from one of these and put and make it the center like i could take and add a yellow piece of ruche to this end 
And so when I start winding it around, I have a yellow centered flower, which I think would be pretty cool. So, ooh, and you know what? I forgot, but I've got some pastel pearlized beads upstairs. I think would be really pretty with this one. All right. Well, since we're talking about that, let me pull up. Okay. Remember the fabric bowl that we made about a month ago? I have been using it like mad. So I keep all of my fabric and cloth jewelry in it when I go up and down stairs. So, because <clears throat> in the evenings, I've been, I have been keeping my hands so busy. I either am making the dorset buttons. Um, I just about finished this woven button with the red, the red metallic. And let me tell you, you have to be patient to do the metallic because whew, it frays easily. It tangles easily. But I wanted to show you. Now, what I would do if I put this on like a fancy suit is I would put a gold bead in the center there. And I think that would end up looking really nicely. So I've got a couple other wooden beads that I plan on doing some more when I get to it. So... I am so excited to show you because here are the other woven beads that I made. Let me. Here are the other woven beads. This one has a little metallic in it. You might see it see it sparkle. And if I think I can handle it, I'll try to weave some that are smaller. So you have to have good eyesight for that. Oh, and my my cataract free eye is doing really good. All right. I'm going to point you down here because I want you to see my Dorset beads. And don't tell Susan, but I made one for her. And I'm going to pop it in an envelope and mail it to her as soon as I get the back on it. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. So, oops. Oh, I didn't know what that was. All right. Whoops, here we go. Whoops, let me use the stem. All right. So here are the variety. I even this week did a tree, a fall tree. These are supposed to be little leaves that have fallen to the ground. But I tried this. But I'm so excited. I got in my new circles and I found these on Etsy and one bag I think one of these bags was three dollars and the other was four dollars so I'm really happy that I got these and they're a certain kind of they're made of a certain kind of plastic and what I like where where I didn't want metal do the flowers have separate layers do you place the yellow on the end and start winding from that end exactly so, I'll show you with this one. I used the lighter strip of ruching. I started with that. And then, after I did two rows of the lighter color, then I stitched the darker color on the end of the lighter one. And then, and, and then ran that around. And you, you twist it upon itself. Let me see. What did I do with that? Oh, here it is. Okay, hold on just one second, because I'm so glad that she is asking, and because this, I, I, when I show you stuff, I want you to be able to do it yourself. It's a lot of fun, and you know, it's a hot summer. You might not want to have a big quilt on your lap, so this allows you to still work with fabric. I'm going to I, what I'm doing is I'm just going to make a few more stitches so I can better show you about how I fold it up. Now, I, I left it on the back, so I'm just going to come over to the front as long as it wraps the edge. That way, it gives you a nice, firm gather 
And one thing I love about this gather, the way you go over the edge, is look, it stays there. Where if you just did a straight stitch gather, it would constantly want to unravel. But this is nice. And starching it and pressing it really good makes it easy. All right, so let me just get a few little more real quickly here. This way I can demonstrate better exactly how you roll those up. Remember, big stitches because you want a nice, loose um, gather so that it has a true flower look to it. Okay, what did I just do? I think I, did I do it right or not? <laughs> nope, I don't think I did. Oops. Okay, let me pull this loose and let me pull this out sometimes if you you know get it hung up like that just pull it out and start again all right so now almost there all right so here all right I think this should give me enough. What I wanted to be able to show you. So you just pull it snug. And do you see how beautiful and loose and when you starch it, it I just love how it looks. It reminds me of like icing on a cake. But you tuck, you tuck this under and you start rolling it like this. Okay. And it looks like a flower. And this will all be ruched. Then what you're going to do when you get back around to the beginning. Then you're going to start the, putting it underneath like this. And showing half of that ruching the next layer. You run it around until it's the size you want. Then, and you're stitching it. And I like stitching it down in the folds so you hide the stitches. And once you've done all the stitching, then you can come through and put beads on it wherever you want. And then on the back, put some kind of, like, let's say you didn't have a bar tack. You could stitch a safety pin on the back and just stitch one side of the bars and leave the part where you open and close it. But hopefully now, with you just see how you put this, tuck that underneath. And this part ends up giving it a little bit of stability underneath. You start rolling it, and then when it meets, then this part starts going underneath, and half of it shows, okay? And then you just stitch it down in between the folds and go around two or three times, depending on how big you want it to get. All right. So thank you for asking that question. Who was it that asked that? I have forgotten. But thank you for asking that. Um, Laura. Laura asked. That's great. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Anytime stop and ask. And Susan's so good at using all caps to get my attention. Oh, yes. You, you can take ties, men's neckties, and make strips out of that silk. That would be beautiful, too. So anyway, don't tell Susan, but this, I know she loves purple, so I made this one for her. I'm going to put a little pen back on it, pop it in a little envelope. There we go. And then I have this one, and this one, and this one. I have so, I'm getting quite a collection now of these. I love that one. This one's for my daughter. She loves cobalt blue. And here is a different purple one that I haven't quite finished, but I'm not sure the edge is going to work. Oh, thank you, Susan. I appreciate you not telling her. In fact, if Nikki is still here, especially since it's her birthday, is there one of these she would like? And I'll pop it in the, in the envelope. Also, she can't have this one because that's my Becky's. But if there's another one she likes, I will pop that one in for her, too. So, if Nikki's still here, just give me a holler, honey. 
but there'll be a little pin back on it so you can wear it or you can put it on a ribbon with your keys or whatever you want. So that would be great. Okay. Oh, you had to rewind and enlarge it. They, I love the two threaded, the two different color thread ones. This one I loved. It was variegated thread. They're just so much fun. And I've got something exciting to show you because with the new rings that I've got, here is a new ring. Here was an old ring. And this is the small one, believe it or not. She likes the purple and the pink one. Okay, does she like this one? Hi, Nadine, you're not too late at all, honey. Okay, so look how exciting. This is the small new ring. Isn't that better? And then, okay, look at the big one. That is going to make a really nice brooch. I can't wait to try to start doing that size. So I'm really happy with my Etsy purchase. And, uh, okay, so now just to make sure you know how to do this, especially with this being, no, the other pink one, and the, oh, okay, so either this pink one and this one, if I could, or this one, preferably, if I can figure out how to do the wonky edge. Yes, I did, and I'm having so much fun with it. So, okay. Hopefully that was, I got the right one because I love giving y'all choices. So since this is a bigger ring, oh, I tell you what, Nadine's stampings are amazing. They are artist quality. And I am not kidding. When I tell people like Miss Jody that she's so talented, I can't believe it, or Miss Nadine that her new art stampings are so amazing. I mean it. Okay. I showed Mark Miss Jody's latest, and he went, that's the creature. And I said, it sure is. I said, isn't she amazing? I said, that has thousands of little pieces of fabric. He was amazed. So I said, yep, I want to get that girl a bigger stage to show her stuff on. But isn't this neat? So I'm showing, sure, oh, well, I was just showing you how to put, let me do it one more, let me do it a little bit more. I put three of these little um, stitches and then make sure, yeah, okay. So I put three of those stitches and you, by having this over the back of your hand and this one coming over, it does like a buttonhole stitch, okay. So now. This is how you put the beads on. If you're wondering, how do you get the beads around the edge? Okay. So I put the bead on, and I pull it all the way. Pull it all the way to the ring. Okay? Yep. Do th now, that's just my, because I, I like the ring, the beads. I like lots of them, but I don't want them all you know, bumpy up. And this is just all six strands of DNC floss. I'm loving using that. So I keep this, I keep this to the back, right? Keep it to the back, come through the front of the ring and pull and then tighten up that knot. Now, at first you see some ring through it. Don't worry. And like I said, these rings are so good. So much better than like a smooth metal one. That Because the once I pull these tight, look how good it holds the stitches. But you notice that the more stitches I put on, it'll close that up. So I, here's my third stitch after I put that bead on. I pull it tight, nice and snug, okay? Now I go down pick up another bead on my needle and this is a tapestry needle but these beads fit really well and I just run the bead all the way to the end and then I do another one of these buttonhole stitches 
Right, that's one, then two, then three. And see how by the time you get the third one on, you pull it so snug, no black shows through. And, you know, after I do this part, then pretend that all these stitches and beads are around the edge. The nicest thing is when you um, do the winding, you now have a place. The beads hold it in place. So after you put the beads, then you take and you wind it like a clock. You wind it around and do about so that there's like 12 spokes, just like a clock, like that numbers on a clock. So then you do the spokes and then you start wrapping the little individual spokes. But with the bigger ones, I plan on doing more trees. I plan on doing little vases. Who knows what I'm going to end up trying, but I'm having so much fun and I have so many silly little beads that I've had gathered up for so long and um, to me it's just a lot of fun so I can do all of these and then I'll put a pen back on it and I'll have a pen and so to me it keeps me busy and it's very inexpensive I already have all these beads I already have a big bag of floss that I've never used because I stopped doing cross stitch and so it's just fun. And I like something thick. Um, I think Bonnie said last time I could use pearl cotton. I could use a fine yarn, whatever works for me. And it takes about four yards, um, maybe just a touch more to do this. So I really do love it. I just wanted to show it to you. And I'm so excited. I got my new rings. And um, much cheaper than these rings. And I love the bigger size. And actually, these, let me see if you can see. I hope you can see. But they're not shiny. They've got like a little bit of a, a little tiny roughness. And that really holds. It holds the floss in place. So look on Etsy for... Dorset button rings. They were very inexpensive and they got to me in just a few days. Love, love, love it. All right. Now. All right. And you know what? I, I have a wonderful woman, a video that I found who does this and I really like it. And let me see if I can remember to type her name. And oh gosh. Okay. Hmm. Something B. Oh, does anybody remember from last? Oh, yes. I've got this tree one. And see, what you do is when you do the wraps across this, you just do, you do the same up here and down there. And it's just pulling them together to get the shape of a trunk. And, or it could be a vase. You know, you can kind of pull it in at the bottom and then widen it to a vase. And, and, you know, I did French knots for the leaves on this. And here's the back of it. Um, the woman's name. What was her name again? Oh, I will put, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will put it, let me write a note. I will put it, when we finish with this, I will put it in the notes. So... Oh, good, good, good. Okay, I'm glad Nadine stuff. That was pretty fast, Miss Nadine. All right, so I will put the Dorset instructions because, oh, she's a lovely lady. I wrote to her and told her that I was using her reference. In fact, it should be in the last weeks, but just in case it isn't. All right, so now I love having... This little handmade basket, we made that a few weeks ago. You can always find it. Go back to, few. i got to remember to keep this out. Keep out Miss Nikki's. All right. So, but I saw all those purple beads and I said, aha, I know who I'm doing that for. All right, let me get this out of the way. All righty. 
Now, let's see. So I did the rouge flowers. Oh, I've got some fun things to show you. I'm being so good at grabbing this camera by, by the arm and not the camera. I'm so proud of myself. I think it's because I don't want to upset Mark. <laughs> he was so good. He re-glued it twice again. It's like, oops. Remember I told you that I was going to try to find photos to show you of the time where I was a costumer. And I showed you last week some of the early ones where I just took over the job before I learned how to do the actual costume making myself. So this is my son, who by this time was four or five. And as you can see, he's wearing more normal costume there. And then I have a photo of my daughter, Becky, and of Christopher. And you can see they're finally wearing real, real costumes. So once I got in there, I was able to start making things. It was nice. I wish I had taken, taken more photos of the things I made, especially the woman's red and black wool gown. But... I did find this one. Remember the coat where I told you I had 86 handmade buttonholes? Well, here is that coat. It's the back of it, but it had the black epaulets and the black trim around the sleeves and all of those buttons. All right, so this coat dates, that style dates to 1686 about. So I just thought, and I dyed the canvas. That's made out of a linen canvas, and I dyed it. And the linen canvas, I mean, that's why I had carpal tunnel syndrome and had to have it repaired, because that was a lot of handwork. When you're making costumes, anything that shows has to be done by hand. So you can sew inside seams, but when you do anything that you could see, Mm -mm. So, but I just thought I'd show you those. If I find any more, I doubt it. I was so busy back then with three little kids and trying to get, you know, bodies and clothing. It was, it was tough. 26 interpreters. And luckily, I had a wonderful volunteer group. I couldn't have done it without them. All right. So, that's the costumes. Now, let me, I'm just looking at, I... I always do an agenda, and because otherwise I'm liable to just forget. So I always, every week I do an agenda. So if you catch me looking over there, I'm trying to figure it out. So anyway, oh, uh, I can't wait. Oh, I did have, I can't wait to show you this. I did before. She had to go out of town last week, so we haven't worked since last Monday, but let me, I'm going to show you a photo of what we've gotten done so far. Whoops, I hope it'll come up. Let me see. Hold on. I'm not, I know you ladies have, you've been doing this stuff for a long time, but I, I'm, I'm kind of new to all this, and it's, it's complicated for them. Okay, you ready? Here are the pieces. Whoops, it keeps, okay, stand still. There we go. There is what we have done so far of the top of the dress. Isn't that cool? And let me tell you, I wanted the lace edging on the sleeves just a certain way. It took me a half an hour to figure out how to do those lace cuffs. So, oh, it's wonderful. She's, didn't she do a wonderful job putting the red soutache trim around? What? Come back here. Um, she did the best job of putting the, the red soutache trim and the buttons on and not only that, come on, 
get off my screen. She fought, figured out how to make the belt narrow down to be able to put, she put that buckle on herself. She did all the red trim, the buttons, and the buckle. So I'm really tickled. I can't wait to show you more of it. I'm trying to think, was there anything else we took a picture of? Let me see. Um, it's, it is going, here are her pieces where she had done the trim on and she had to do it all by hand. Cause I said, you know, you'll never be able to get such a tiny little trim on with the sewing machine. Look at the collar. Is that sharp or what? I love that collar. Love, love, love it. Oh, I sure will tell her. I sure will. Okay, I guess that's all. I, and I don't know if y'all do this. Every once in a while I see a scene, I think, I would love to make a quilt out of that. Mm -hmm. So this was on Rick Steves, and it was just such a beautiful little port um, scene that I stopped the TV, whipped out my phone, took a picture. Now... If I really were to take and make a quilt from that, first thing I would do is ask his permission. I can make anything for myself, but if I show it to y'all, I always ask permission first because that's his show. I'm sure it's copyrighted. So, all right. So now we've talked about all of that. What I wanted, oops, my makeup might be a little heavy. Sorry about that. But anyway... What I want to do is I want to have a competition. And I want, and the winner will win a gift certificate to either Pineapple Fabrics or Missouri Star Quilts. Okay? A $10 gift certificate. So, anybody can enter. I think she will be. I, I love her sense of design. And making it happen. She's amazing. So, what you're going to do, because I was reading my Quilting Arts magazine. And let me tell you what. I read these over and over. And then I pull out the pages and save those. This is my very favorite magazine, Quilting Arts. And I was noticing they were showing the coolest things. Now, this is an article by Francis Holiday Alford. And look at these wonderful pen cushions. And you know how it kind of goes along with the embellishment aspect that I've been trying to do this past year and loving doing. Whether it's all these buttons or whether the cute little uh, impromptu artworks. And um, so I was looking through this article. And since she does a lot of the embellished fabric things, she'll take the little bits and pieces left over and turn them into pen cushions. Look at these. Now, Linda, we know you would be outstanding at this stuff. Here are felted top pen cushions. Look at that. And let's say you want to try some felting. But you don't have all the fancy stuff that it would take to do it. Well, I have a secret for you. Take three old sewing needles that you've had before. Like this. Three sewing needles. And tape them together. And now you can do felting by hand. You can just hold it and you put your wool on top of the fabric and you just... Punch, 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 punch. And it forces wool fibers into the fabric. And then you have something felted. So, how easy is that? Doesn't even cost any money. See if you like it. Now, and if you wanted them spaced a little further apart, wrap each one with electrical tape, if you have it, or mask, little masking tape. Masking tape. Wrap each needle first, then put the three together, then wrap them as a whole. And that'll give you a little space. Um, it'll work with felt, 
it'll work with wool and it, what it does is it drop yeah it can be the acrylic it can it doesn't have to be you're right susan it doesn't have to be real wool it can be acrylic felt and that's just because i love i really enjoy some of that but like you could use the acrylic felt put little pieces on top of something like that maybe on top of some um stuffing or batting scraps and then just use the pin and it will embed it in the batting scraps and then you'll have a nice you can have it look just like that so but i was looking through this and i thought this was pretty fantastic and where she has embellished fabrics look at that she uses stitches on her machine, just takes, puts layers of fabric, use all, uses hand stitches, stitches from her sewing machine. So she has these scraps, and she said, I don't want to throw them away. I've done so much work. And so she took and she did a band, and the round parts builds a pin cushion. Now, I'm not going to show you all of it because I don't know if I really should. But then there was a reader challenge they had for making the most unusual pin cushions. I fell in love with these. I said, I want to do this. Look at this. Look at all the different stitches. Look at this coffee cup. Is that the, I mean, teacup. Is that the coolest thing? She took and used the fabric wrapped skirt rope, made a teacup, and then put stuffing in it, and then the brown fabric on top. Is that the coolest? Hi, Miss Linda. Look at this. So, all kinds of ideas. And Linda, I hope you saw this because I thought of you. When I was looking at this woman's pen cushions, because it's all bits and scraps of her collage artwork. And is that the is that the cutest? And you could do that tea bag too. You just have to tea dye some fabric and either carefully write tea like that, or if you have a stamp. But I'm going to show you a few of these give you an idea and what I would like for you to do is to do put some of your own personality in these pen cushions put some of your own look at this one personality look at the bead work done on the pen cushion and the border that is gorgeous you would have to have a beading needle because those are seed beads and look at this little piece of antique lace Make it out of old linens, little precious bits. Look at this one, this piece of pie, cherry pie, with lace as the whipped cream on the top. She took this is batting that was felted onto cloth and then tea dyed. Look at this llama. Is that the cutest thing? Look at that. So. I'm going to give you, how many weeks do you think you want to come up with your own design of a pincushion? Now, here is a pincushion you can put on your wrist. But I'm going to warn you, if you make a wearable pincushion, have some kind of hard surface. Like on that wrist pincushion, make sure you have a hard surface in there. Because it could be a cutout of a Cool Whip top or something. But you have to have something. Because uh, a dear lady thought she had her wrist, her wrist pin cushion on. She didn't. And it was late at night. And she went to put her pin in the wrist pin cushion. And that was her arm. So if you do a ring pin cushion or a wrist pin cushion right here. Put a hard surface that will help stop that needle so it doesn't go all the way into your arm. Look at this. Look at that. Is that precious? Isn't that cool? All the stitches. Look at this. It's a pinata pin cushion. How cute is that? And these were made by individuals who made them, sent them into the magazine. 
And this is just to give you an idea of how creative you can be. This is a donkey. I thought that was a face right there, but his face is really that, and that's his nose and mouth. And then look at that sweet thing. Isn't that sweet? And then look at this one. How cool is that? That's all DMC, MC, DMC floss. That makes it look like a mossy. And it, look at that house. Isn't that cool? I thought of Nadine when I saw that. I said, she could make one of those like that. She's so talented. And she loves, you know, all that look. Then here, that was a duck candy dish turned into a pen cushion. This one looks like an old mossy log. Look at this with the half wooden spools. And they're wrapped in fabric. See? So they... She must have had somebody cut them in half for her and she wrapped them in fabric. Look at this fish one. And look at this. This is a satin and it's, I think she called it a dragon protecting its pearl. And the dragon's supposed to be all of that part wrapped around. So these are to give you some good ideas. Oh, that was it. Okay. So that was the last page of those. So I thought, we're going to do our own little pincushion contest. So what? how much time do you need? It's the 1st of August. Do you need two weeks? Do you need three weeks? Or do you want to make the deadline Labor Day weekend? What would you say? No, you don't need a year. <laughs> Susan, you're so cute. But I want to get y'all's input on what what would you like to do and the the quilting arts magazines having a they're sponsoring a scroll contest again i thought of miss linda mccullum let me see if i can um find the scroll because every everyone is enjoying embellishing creating their own fabrics it's just wonderful. And if I could find it, I would want to show you. Let me see. But, oh, here we go. Snippet scrolls. And so they there's a tutorial in here about how she does it. This is right up Nadine's alley. Because these are fabric scraps that they've done coloring on, that they've done stenciling, stamping. Um, let me see. See that right there? They've used an old bobbin spool and made it. And so, oh, look at this one. Isn't that great? So anyway, if some of you are interested, go to Quilting Arts Magazine online if you don't have, if you're not already a subscriber and look up I think the deadline for entry is August 15th. You have to send a picture and by email. And um, But if you would like to make one of those scrolls and enter it, and all the winners get their picture put in the magazine. And it'll be for winter. So August 15th is that. Yeah, and, and the thought of turning it into like a scroll, and they they sit in the thing. I'm sure if you go to quiltingarts.com, they'll have the information up. But they said, make it about you, something where they can see. It means something about you or who you are or what you love. So, okay. Ah, I think I have pretty much finished that. I showed you the Misty Woodland quilt, which I'm getting excited of. I, I'm just finding, keep the image in front of you or whatever your source of inspiration. Keep working. Get all the different little subtle shades of fabric you can. Keep working on it. You voted on end of the year. <laughs> Well, that's Susan's way of saying it. Don't make it too soon. I can't handle it. Let's say Labor Day. Whatever the Sunday is in Labor Day, that's our deadline. 
So that means, yeah. <laughs> now I do, I do try to sleep eight hours. I'm not sure it always works, but let's say Labor Day is the week. That Sunday of Labor Day, that's the deadline. So September 1st, that's one month from today. You have to send me your entry, a picture in an email and okay pwc.com i don't want to work susan too hard so i'm gonna to try to jump in it send me an email with a picture of your pen cushion and a little information about it you know what materials did you use what is the size of it just let so i can brag on y'all that's too soon a whole month see i'm afraid if i make it too far in the future Y'all will forget about it because I know I would. I mean, if I don't have a deadline, then I'm like, I don't know. So, well, when, if we didn't do it Labor Day, when would we get it done? October 1st? <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, Cheryl, you do, you enter competitions and things like that. Am I not giving enough time? <laughs> you won't forget. Okay, then October 1st. All right. We will do October 1st. Now, let me see if that falls on a Sunday. That falls, let's see. Oops. Come on, Deb. Um, that falls on a Friday. So the winner will be announced October 3rd. October 3rd. And by the 1st, you have to have your picture of your thing to me. All right. And then we will vote on the show. And I'm not going to compete. I'm just enjoying the fun. I'll probably make something because I've got an idea. But October 1st, and, okay, all right, that, thank you, Cheryl, because Cheryl does this kind of stuff, she's entered other kind of competitions, she's good at that, and she kind of has a better feel for it, so I, it's not that I don't trust Holly and Susan and Laura, <laughs> All right, October 1st is the deadline to get a picture to me. So, all right. Well, that'll be fun. And like I said, that the winner will get a $10 gift certificate to either Missouri Star Quilts or to Pineapple Fabrics. All right. And we'll talk about it more in the coming weeks. But I'm excited about it. All right. Well, I'm thrilled. All right. So... Oh, I love this writing back there. It, let me see if I can. I saw that on an advice column, and it was so good. I said, I'm printing that out. Let me show you. Your acceptance teaches acceptance. Your grace teaches grace. Your love teaches love. I thought, oh, man, that is good. I said, I've got to print that out. So, thank you. I love y'all, too, very much. All right, well, I think what we'll do now is go look at your beautiful photos. And then I think that what I'll do is show you again, one more time, doing paper piecing. You can never have too many tutorials on paper piecing and what I did is I printed it in grayscale so I could save my ink on ink saver because that's plenty dark enough and you notice how there is a seam allowance oh one thing really quick now that it's August 1st and my social security and my retirement's in or my social security is almost in I'm going to mail out the last couple prize packages. So thank you for your patience. But we, this morning, I had to buy another refrigerator. And we were really hoping for this other brand, but they're so backlogged. 
And I went to get ice this morning, and that poor refrigerator was barely, it was moaning and groaning and complaining. And I said, that's it. I can't wait for my dream. Fr my dream refrigerator was the cheapest one in that line. Trust me. And, um, but we ordered a new refrigerator that will be delivered Tuesday. I'm so excited. I'm not excited about paying for it. Because just to get a side-by-side -side with ice in the door, I guess all the fancy. I don't want it to talk to my, my cell phone. I don't want it to keep track of my inventory. But just to get a side-by-side -side with ice through the door and water through the door was $1,300. I mean, come on. And sadly... They don't last. The one we have only lasted 12 years. Does anybody remember refrigerators that lasted for 20, 25 years? I had a freezer one time that was over 40 years old. Oh, yeah, those are nice, but they're like $2,000. So I said, no, just give me side by side as long as. And I wanted the ice and water through the door. That would be tall enough for a cup this size to go in. The one we have now has such a little shallow ice and water dispenser that we have to keep a towel on the floor to catch the drips because to try to get that big cup in it, I have to angle it. And it always ends up dripping. So I said, okay, this is what we have to get. So Tuesday, it should be here. Ah, love spending money, I tell you. <laughs> But, you you know, y'all go through the same thing. It comes in these cycles, you know. Drives me nuts. All right, let me darken it a little in here so we can see your pictures really good. All right. And luckily, the 95-degree temperatures have gone away for the moment. Cross our fingers. I don't like it. I'm ready for winter. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, here we go. I'm going to turn my camera very carefully. I'm trying to be so good. All right, turn this. All right, let's go see what we've got. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Where is it? All righty, righty, righty. All right, since Miss Alexis is here, thank goodness I didn't take this beauty out yet because that's so special. And oh, here we go. Whoops, here. This is Hoist. See, I'm actually learning the characters now. How about that? And I love all the beadwork she has done. I mean, she has really embellished them now. And, you know, that's a lot of fun. That is so much fun. And, you know, they say people who have a passion for whatever crafting or artwork, they are healthier and they live longer. Here we go with Miss Betty's. I love Miss Betty's work. Look at this. It, look, not that, no, not that close. I'll get it right. Just, just. <laughs> Oh, isn't that wonderful? And I love the gathering and the stitching and the cheesecloth and all of her ways of showing the water, the ways. And look, she's even got a lighter spot on this post and the floss that's supposed to be the fence material. Very great. Good job, Miss Betty. Now, look at this thing. Is this beautiful or what? And I love how he's standing in the water and she even made a circular pattern because that's what happens when animals step in the water. It makes little rings around their feet. Whoops. But look, this will at least let you see all the piecing that was involved with this. Look at this. Amazing work. Way to go, Miss Batty. We love your work. Isn't that just fabulous? 
And it doesn't matter what the colors you use. It's still, you can tell it's a wonderful heron. Isn't that great? Love, love, love it. Okay. I'll tell you what. I don't know what I would do without all of my creativity. It would be a very boring world. Now look at this. I love the color she chose in this and the crisp white sashing. And look at this. She put buttons on it. Look at those little butterfly buttons. Way to go, Miss Bonnie. All right, Miss Bonnie's impressing me. She's right. She's more bohemian than I thought. Let me see. I don't know if I have any new photos here. Um, what is... I don't... Oh, I... I'll show you. My daughter is fostering a kitten. Is that the cutest? What a cute little kitty kitty. That's the perfect thing. You don't want to take it on forever. Oh, and here is my granddaughter's outfit that she, we're making now that she designed. Love, love, love it. Love it. Okay. Oh, I babysat Polly. And forgot to, um, she's going to be here, I hope, next Sunday. So she is, I'll show her to you. But this is my grand dog, Polly. And my daughter's walking her through downtown Lexington. And look at the cute pig. She's not very happy. That expression is, mommy's making me sit beside this scary thing. <laughs> so she's not very happy with that fiberglass pig. <laughs> All right, I think that's it for me. I think that's my, okay, I think that's it. All right, so let me, whoops, I didn't mean to close all that out. All right. Okay. Diana Wright. Diana Wright has sent in a few photos this last week and we love her work and she's worried that she's been too busy to be in here to chat with us so she thought she needed to quit the site and I understand if it's just too much to try to keep up with the happenings on our site but we don't want to lose Miss Diana Look at this gorgeous quilt. She finally finished it. She's so tickled. And yes, we know she's busy. And we know that she's too busy sometimes to come play with us. But we still love seeing her work. Love being inspired by her great talent. So if y'all would all, if y'all would like to see Diana Wright still participate to the best she can, only what she feels like she can, then please let her know, write a message in here today, and hopefully she'll watch it and hear that we miss her and want her back. So she is such a great inspiration. And you can always reach me if you're looking for a phenomenal long arm quilter, and I will send you her contact information. She's very talented. Here's Miss Jeannie's ring pin cushion made from a bottle cap stuffed. And, and this is the kit that I sent her that I never finished. And she's brave enough to finish it. So love Miss Jeannie. Whoops. I did that again. Let me see. Are you ready? Here we go. The latest Miss Jody from Miss Jody in her series. Isn't that amazing? For some of y'all who are too young to remember 1950s horror movies, this is The Creature from the Black Lagoon. And that is wonderful. And it goes along with her others in the collection. Aren't they amazing? I mean, look at this. I always show Frankie. But look at this Bride of Frankenstein. You can tell that's Elsa Lancaster. I mean, it's just so obvious. It's so good. 
So we love Miss Jody's work. All right, let's see what else we have. Yep, and I've got, this is why I was told you earlier, when I see the embroider, embroidered, the embellished, I think of Miss Linda, because she has taken it to a whole new level. So talented. And, you know, why not have these little snippets of your past? You know, I, I've got an old wedding gown that none of my daughters wanted, that I don't mess with. Why not use it? And make artwork out of it that then I can enjoy. So I, I really love that philosophy. Get things out of paper boxes and, and plastic bags and start making something with them and enjoy them. Pass them down the line. Oh, look at this. Isn't this wonderful? I love this. This is, I believe, Miss Lisa's work. Yep, Miss Lisa. All right. Then, our, one of our newest members, her email address is Monkey Mary. I think that is the cutest thing. But she sent us some wonderful photos. And I have to tell you, see this plant here and see this plant there? Well, actually, um, I think that might be. But this is a fuchsia. I kill fuchsias left, right, and center. Look at that gorgeous fuchsia. So I'm jealous that she has such a wonderful fuchsia. But I love her bright and happy porch. That's wonderful. Okay. Then I believe this is a purple, um, purple leaf plum. And that is a beautiful tree. And look at this huge fern. I've never seen a fern that big. I mean, that's a floor and the rail. That's huge. Love it, love it, love it. And look at her white crepe myrtle. If I'm not mistaken, that's a Natchez crepe myrtle, and I think it is gorgeous. So thank you, Miss Mary, for sharing those wonderful photos. I love seeing gardens. That was my first love. And then here is Miss Marsha's fabric beads. Love these. Isn't that nice? And now, let's see. Then, Melanie. I've got some new things from Miss Melanie. I told you she was working on the Binding Tool Star. And here's one of the great blocks. Well, you wait. Miss Melanie's been busy. Even though she had foot surgery on the 21st, she's been busy. Look at this. Isn't that great? I love the kind of ballet pink and then this, or peachy pink, and this wonderful sagey minty green. Isn't that one? What a neat color combination. That's one of her landscapes. But look at this. She made it. I am so proud of her. And, you know, the Binding Tool Star, I found it to be a pretty straightforward, easy piece to complete. And, but boy, doesn't it look complicated? Isn't that gorgeous? I love that. So thank you for sending those photos to us. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. Okay. And then I, I still absolutely love um, Michelle Spool's quilt. I'm fascinated with the one that Alex Anderson's been doing. Oh, and is anybody going to participate in um, Ricky Tim's? Is it a kaleidoscope quilt? I can't wait. And here we've got beautiful work that Miss Nadine did. Isn't that charming? Gosh, I love that. And it's something satisfying, so satisfying about creating. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow. And these are her stamped and painted and created artworks that she's doing this summer, and they are gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Let's see. We've got a couple more. 
They are too special not to see every one. Look at that. Once upon a dream. Isn't she? She has got this. She can make a magical, a magical world come to life. Beautiful, Miss Nadine. You are so talented. Look at her. She's using stamp inks, and they leave their mark, don't they? And she got her vaccine shot. So proud of her. And here is another one of her works. It's in a notebook. But they, oh, man, frame those puppies. They are gorgeous, gorgeous. And, you know, she is learning so much from doing that. What a wonderful thing. Okay. Let's see what Miss Patricia is up to up in Nova Scotia. Let me turn this around so you can see it a little better. Here, she loves to go to thrift stores and buy bundles of fabric that people have donated. And she said it's always so interesting to see what you get because you get some things you might not think about buying, but I guarantee you'll use them. They'll come just perfectly, um, perfectly handy at the right moment. And then here is one shot of her wonderful creative space. I love it. Love it, love it. That is a space where you can just picture all the creating that she's going to do. Isn't that wonderful? People's creative space is so... I, I just told her I love seeing where people create because it, the same... The same feeling goes through each one. It's wonderful. Colors, textures, wonderful. All right. Now, Miss Polly. And, oh, I have to, she'll have to tell us how she's liking her new machine that her husband got her for her birthday. Yay. Isn't that wonderful? I love jukies. And I, oh, that's a nice, nice jukey. And then there is her tartan plaid quilt that she made. I love that, too. All right. Now, let's see who we have. Um, let's see. Sheila. We have a couple from Miss Sheila. She, or Sherry. Sharon. I'm sorry. Her name is Sharon or Sherry. Sherry. Look at this wonderful tote that she made. I love that cork type looking fabric. And this one's called Arkansas Crossroads. And I would have, she's either sewing it, I mean, quilting it by hand or by machine because part of it's quilted, part of it is not. So she's either putting it through her domestic or she's doing it by hand. I just love that tote. Talented, talented lady. And there she is. Hi, Sherry. Sherry Dietz. And I promise I'll learn your names. I've always had a problem with names. But I will, I'll eventually learn. Now let me see. Oh, we saw Miss Susan's amazing garden. But this just cracked me up. She's got the cutest little memes that that come up on her postings and this this one was just too cute i don't know how she does it but i love them love 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 them okay and wonderful garden y'all that's terrific i think that's our last one nope teresa louise gotta get teresa louise i quilt too i love this there are her inspirations all of her little fabrics. Isn't that wonderful? And I love that she's got, in the, got these on an easel so she can look directly on. That's a great idea. Great idea. So way to go, Miss Teresa Louise. I love it. All right. That is it for your show and tell today. And we dearly love your photos please keep them coming at the hour to hour time to quilt at twc.com 
And because it is awfully nice, we are inspired by the work you do. So please consider sending us photos that mean something to you. Because I guarantee you, they will mean a lot to us. All right. So I am back now. And I've kind of run out of things to say. And... I did it. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh. I, well, you know what? That sounds like a foreign language to me, Miss Susan. I'm still amazed. I have no clue how to do any of that. It's just part... Susan is very magical to me because she does these things and I don't know how she does them. I have no clue how she makes things work, but she is amazing at it. So that'll be part of Miss Susan's magic. We'll leave it at that. That's about the best. So, because I would get so confused if I tried to do some of the stuff she did. This is the block we're working on. And you can use whatever neutral you want to do, but this is, I am loving using my scraps up, making crumb strips. And now I said, well, what do we do with those crumb strips? And I think we make a quilt out of them. And this is a fun quilt because there are probably hundreds of ways you can turn the blocks around. In fact, let me show you one more time again. And if you... <laughs> You're so funny. I don't have any magic. It's just hard work. <laughs> okay. So let me show you some of the many ways that you can use this simple block and create a quilt. Now let me see. I've got to find crumb quilt. Okay. Let me see. Huh. Put my glasses on. All right. Foundation. Hmm. Oh, there is a folder. I thought there was, but I lost it. Okay. Here is a very simple, like, streak of lightning you could do. That's what, I love blocks that allow you, like log cabin. They allow you to make so many different things with them. Now, let me see if I can enlarge this. Okay. These are just some of the many designs that you can create. Some of them looks like they might have already been doubled up. But just this one block can make, well, I'm trying to bring the page down. Hmm. But this is just one block that you can make with this. I'll, there we go. All right. Now let me see if I can find, I had another page of these, but I love it when you can take something and it's so creative. Okay, here is, here's a different page right here. And let me, okay. And here are some more. So, it's just kind of interesting what kind of quilt you can make. And I, I designed the block in EQ8. And then you can do this rotate thing where you can turn them into all kinds of designs. So, I am going to, I want very much to finish this and make this. And, <laughs> oh, time in a bottle. Oh, you'll make me cry on that one. Oh, oh my goodness. Time in a bottle. Ugh. All right. So, here are my scraps. 
here are my rulers. And I'm going to show you real quick before we go today. I've loved you being here. And I will come back and say goodbye before we're ready. But I just want to show you how I'm working on it. I went ahead with this one. And I used a rotary cutter and just cut. But notice you have to leave the seam allowance. And you'll sew these together along this line. Then I took and folded all the lines on this. And there's several reasons I do it. One is because when you put the fabric on, you put it on this side. Well, you can't see the markings on this side. But if you have it folded, it helps you see right where to put it. So then now, I'm going to fold it on this line. And I love using this bone folder to make the line nice and crisp. And then I just go along here and I fold it on all of these spaces. You don't have to use this part of the pattern if you want to just sew crumbs together first. But, like, I have some pieces that were already strip sets that I could fit right there. So that's pretty cool. But I'm going to show you from square one... Let me pull out some of these babies. All right. I'm going to show you how I do it starting from the beginning because I don't want you to feel uncomfortable or unsure of yourself. Come on. I've got to iron. This piece is a little wrinkly. I don't like it when the edges curl up because you can't see where you're working. Come on, my iron is heating up. Come on. I hope my iron's still working. It uh, seems to take longer to heat up. Okay, now, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here on A1, and I'm going to cut this out bigger than it needs to be. Now, don't worry about waste, because honestly, now A1 is this one, so it's this space right here. And what I like to do, so that you don't have to pin, is I like taking a glue stick, rubbing it on there, and putting down my first piece of fabric and then by checking the fold lines you can make sure that you are fully covering the space and I can see right now I am now I don't need quite this much fabric right here so this is when I'm going to turn the paper over and put this ruler this is an add a quarter ruler put the ruler here and I keep this little cutting pad and a small cutter right here by my machine. I put the add a quarter ruler, and then that tells me that this is exactly, look at that, the right size right there. So then, once I've got this line straight, I need to add another, Pete, another color. And hmm, this one might be interesting. And you know what? I try not to be so picky because if I'm too picky, it's going to make me crazy. I won't enjoy it. Oh, that one's not quite long enough yet. Hold on. Let me find another one. But I try not to be too picky because it'll take all the fun out of it if I am. Now, this one's cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rough cut this one, keeping my hand out of the way. I'm going to rough cut this piece. And now I have glued down piece A1. Now this is going to be piece A2. So what I do is I put it on here and line it up 
with that edge that I trimmed so pretty. Now I can take and put a pin far away from my stitching line like this. And then I come over to the machine and I turn it over and I sew in between. I start early. Oh, shorten your stitch length down to like 1.9 or 1.8. And then I start early, sew before the line. And then I'm going to sew down, 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 down. Go past the line. All right. Then take out that pin. Where is my bone folder? Or my wooden iron. That's what I'm going to use. And take my wooden iron and rub it along this. Because I can, I could go to the iron and iron it. But a lot of times I want to move pretty quickly. So I just use the wooden iron. All right. So now what I need to do is I'm going to go up and remove the excess here. I don't really have to do this yet, but. Sometimes it helps me to stay focused if I keep the area very neat. And you need a little trash can handy for this. All right, so the next piece I'm going to sew on, I've done one, two. Now I'm going to go back over here to three. And I've already got a nice quarter of an inch line. So all I have to do is turn this over and put my fabric right sides together. Line that edge up right there. All right. Then I can put a pin in away from the, the sewing line. You don't want to take a chance on... Whoops, let me move my microphone. Okay. You turn it back over. And now you sew on the line for A3. All right. Start early. And don't stop sewing till you're a quarter inch or so past the line. And if you don't know what I'm saying by start early and finish late, it's so beyond. And that just really helps anchor it. If you started sewing right at the place, you wouldn't have a nice um, you wouldn't have a nice locked stitch and they're liable, the stitches would liable to come apart. So now I'm going to go ahead here, fold this back so I can get ready for when I do my next seam on this side. I just put this at a quarter, bump it up against this folded paper, run it along. There you go. So now I know Here's one, two, three, four is going to be the next one. You kind of bounce back and forth. So I'm going to fold up the line, put the add, of, add a quarter ruler, come right along, trim that off. All right, so now I want another piece of fabric. And I'm looking. This one's going to be an interesting color block. I just have that feeling. It's going to be a little different than the ones I've got, but that's what's going to make that's what's going to make this quilt this quilt it, it's what's going to make it scrappy. So, yep, A4. So I put this piece and see how this is just scrap. These are just little crumbs. All right, put that there and then put the pen here. And come over here and sew this right on A4. And just keep reminding yourself, you know, of what line you're on next. Start early, stitch down, run long, done. Okay. Take that pen out. And then... Come back here with your wooden iron, which really does a good job. There's something about, you can do your fingernail, but, you know, the older I get, the more um, my fingernails want to split and break. So, okay. 
All right. So now let's see how this side. Oh, it's already perfect quarter of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and trim up this side just so that when I come back over there, it'll be ready to go. So I fold the paper on the next line and then I put the add a quarter ruler and come right along that ruler. And then when I take that away, see, it's got the perfect quarter inch. All right. Now, I'm going to try something different. Just, ooh, this is a gorgeous piece. Hold on, i got to, let me get, I need a seam ripper. This is from a piece that I had sewn somehow. So, let me just grab a seam ripper. All right. Okay. Now, I know that technically I'm supposed to come over to this side, but I think right now this would be really striking against this. So, I need to put right sides together, edges even. I need to put a pin over here. Let me get this one done really quickly. It's your quilt, and if you want to break some of the rules, fine. As long as it doesn't hurt you in the long run. You know, if that I felt like this fabric needed to be in this place. And I'm the boss of my own quilt, so that's a good thing. All right, if you've ever had a wooden iron, it has an L and an R. If you're left-handed, you hold it like this because the angle is done just right. And I use it so much you can see the wood start to burnish and get shiny. If I were right-handed, I would hold it this way and go that way. I'm just thought I'd let you know. All right, I'm going to fold this back and go ahead and trim this just to make it easier for next time because I am going to go back to the other side for this one. But that add a quarter ruler really makes things pretty simple. Now, I'm, I'm going to take, I'm just wanting to get rid of all this. So I'm just going to carefully run the cutter right along there just to neaten this up just a little bit. And I'm going to run it right down here. A lot of times I'll wait to the end because then the reveal is so neat. But, oh well. Okay. So, let's see. What color do I want next? Ooh, this is cool. Boy, I'm going all earthy colors on this one. This is pretty nice. All right. So, oh, it's two pieces. Okay. And see, these are just scraps. I lay this down. I'll come over here and sew right on the next line. Okay. Yay. All right. And then I just get my wooden iron. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim this up. So I put that add a quarter ruler, grab my little rotary cutter. There we go. Then I'll go back over here. That's already a quarter of an inch because I did a really good job. Ooh, I see a neat looking color that I want to use next. I'm going to, okay, seven or eight. Okay, so I'm going to use this right here. And you can make, you know, I just happen to get in a real earthy area of the scrap fabrics. But that's cool because the next one might be mostly uh, primary colors or pastels. Who knows where I could be going. Take this and fold this over. Give it a pressing. Now here. I fold on this, 
put my add a quarter ruler. And after you've done this a good amount of times, if you want to not have to use the add a quarter ruler because you feel like it slows you down, then you're welcome to do that. I often do it. You just have to make sure you're very comfortable with what you're doing. All right. Now I need another interesting color. Let's see. Ooh. That's really interesting. All right, so I'm going to put this right here. Then just put, pick it over here. So on that next line. Whoops, come on. I hate when I have to search for a foot pedal. All right. Okay. Okay, so then I come back and fold this, and I'm going to show you, like if I didn't want to use that add, add um, a quarter ruler, then I would just eyeball it like this, and as long as I don't cut it too short, then I'm good. I'm going to put another piece of this blue, or, ooh. Let me see if there's enough of this. I'm hoping there's enough of this purple to use that. I think it might just be. Whoops. Got to flip it over first. Sorry. Sometimes I forget. It is like sewing upside down a little. And so sometimes I, I can forget and have to try it again. But that's okay. I mean, you know. It's just not, it doesn't come normally to us, so it feels different. Now, let me see. It just does come to the edge. So let me tell you what I do when I get that, and it's just going to catch. I will come in, pull it nice, get it nice and close to that edge as we can, and then I'll come right along just one hair width into the seam allowance and I will stitch it down. And the reason I do that is because if it's kind of a short piece, I don't want to lose any of it. And and I really wanted that purple in there. And I think I kind of like, this is looking, it's different, but I like it. It's not like my normal Deb stuff. All right. Now I think I will come in here. It's sometimes it's really nice to just try up something new. And since I'm not doing a whole quilt, it gives me that flexibility. And try little snippets of colors that aren't my normal colors. So normally I like all kinds of saturated jewel tones. And this is where I'm learning a lot from this process. And if you're noticing, I still have my black thread in, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. And now, and this one had plenty of space, but I'm still going to do a little stitch there. Because that little piece of fabric's not going to want to always lay flat when I need to sew it. So, there we go. All right, so now that was the hard part. The rest is easy. Let me cut this excess off here. And let's say, you know how you sew over? Don't worry. Just kind of pull where you need to stitch it. Just pull those stitches loose from the paper and make it lay right on the line. Okay, now with this one, this is an important one. So I'm going to use the add a quarter ruler. I am so hard on all of my tools. You, I leave tape on it. What a mess. But I, I do love them. Oops, I didn't get all the way down here. Let me put my add a quarter back in place. Hmm. Okay. It's, it was almost there. Okay. So... There is the hard part. Then I'm going to go ahead and just take this and eyeball cut it. There. And where? Okay. I need a triangle. 
one of my triangles. This is the easy part. And I think that's why this comes together so well is because once you just do the half of it, then the rest is just a breeze. So I've got to make sure to see what side. That's a rougher side. So I'm going to put the smoother side, right sides together, put that down here like this. Then I am going to pin it because it's too much to hold on to when I flip it over. It's a rather a long piece, so this way I know it won't go anywhere. Then I'm going to come over here, run this under the machine so I can see a lot right along the line. And you noticed I put the right sides together because after I sew this line right here, I will be folding that piece back. All right. All right. Now I'll take out these pins. Whoops. Take out these pins. Now I am going to press this because that's a lot. I, I want to get a nice, straight, good seam before I sew the next piece on. And here it is. That looks really good. Oops. Where is... Oh, something got on the fabric a little. All right. So now I come in here. I need to fold this back. This is the next line. Fold it back. Put my add... A, add three-eighths. Oh, this is bigger than a quarter. That's why... But I like it because it's long, but that's add three-eighths. Two-eighths is the quarter. Oh, well, I'll still use it. It doesn't matter as long as I'm somewhere around a quarter of an inch. That's good enough. Okay. I thought the only difference in them is that the length of the ruler itself, but it doesn't matter. Okay. So now that's the perfect size. So when I come in here with my triangle, I put the right sides together. If you can't really see it that good because I'm trying, I'm lining it up with that white fabric. And I'm going to put a pen here so I don't have to hold the whole thing just and perfectly in place myself. I can hold this in. I'll come put it under the sewing machine and sew on that line right there. Okay. All right. So now, take the pen out. And I am going to take this over to the sewing machine. I mean, the ironing board. And press it. And then, oh, my iron is dirty. That's where I'm getting those marks. So let's say you get a few little marks like that on your white fabric because you've been using adhesives with your iron. Take a white ruler or a white ruler like this. I don't see, I mean, White eraser, pardon me, white eraser. You can use this white eraser. You can use an art gum eraser. And you can erase off the marks that your iron left. So let me try this white one again. It did a better job. And if that doesn't take them off, you can use a dampened rag to get the rest off. Now what I do... As I feel brave enough, I'm just going to cut along the edge of that paper right there. And, but if you're not, if your hand's not good and steady, feel free to use a ruler. And keep your fingers away. All right, there we go. So now, here is the block. And what I do at this point, I've already pressed it. Now I'm going to turn the stitch length up to 3.6, 3.5, and I'm going to do a basting stitch within the seam allowance, make, making sure to hold, keep the fabric flat. This doesn't have to be pretty. It's not going to be seen. This is just to make sure that when I do put my blocks together, whoops, 
I came off the edge of the fabric. When I do put my blocks together, everything lays nice and flat. Oh, I think it popped out of the presser arm. So, anyway, just run your stitch all the way around the outside of your block. That way, when you pick up two blocks to sew them together, see this one's it's got the gray color that this one's supposed to have. But this way, when you put them together, this has all been stitched here. You don't have to worry about anything getting folded up in between. Now, let me show you while we're here. Let me show you how to sew two blocks together. You take and put the pin through this line straight through. Then you come over here and you put the pin in the very same place on the next block and come in right on the black line. And that's how you pin them together. Do that all the way down. When you get them, make sure that the pin is laying perpendicular. Then you can come behind it and pin it. Like that. Then you take this one out and you can start sewing them together. So just look for lines that are the same on each one and make sure that where the pin that goes right in at that intersection comes right out at the next the next one's intersection and that way you know you've got them perfectly matched and then when you when it's sitting up just like that perfectly perpendicular then you come in behind and put a pin there you go that's how you match them up. And I would do that most of the way down. That way when you sew, you never have to take out stitches. Okay. Do you do they have a longer add a quarter? That is a good question because I'm just now I I don't know if I even knew that one was three eighths. But um so I that's a good question to ask. I don't know. But anyway, now you can always use that. But the nice thing about these, these rulers is you just bump it right up to the folded paper. I mean, that's see how it's got a lip on it? That makes it really easy. Here is the add a quarter, and it's got that lip, and it just bumps right up to it. And they're both, I think, you know, this one maybe is like $6 and the other one's like 10 something or 8 something like that. All right. And this pattern is my personal pattern. And if you would like a free copy of all of it, I'll give you the foundation. I'll give you the foundation. I'll give you some coloring ideas and some placements. Some of the, um, I, I think I did 23 different placements and you just have to send me an email at our time to quilt whoops at oh gosh Susan I'm not good at this I have my laptop sitting up on a crate and so it's real hard to type that way at twc.com <laughs> There you go. All right. So if you send me a request, the crumb quilt pattern, I will be happy to email it right back to you. Okay. Well, I think I'm done. I what at first I went so fast. I thought, how am I going to fill up the time? Well, it worked. <laughs> so anyway, it's really good to see you. Don't forget about the pen cushion challenge. And I mean, really go overboard. Find, I mean, make it exciting and make it say you. So um, is there any other questions I need? Thank you, everybody. Take good care of yourself. And I will see you Thursday night for you art quilters when we work some more on our misty woodlands. And then otherwise, I'll see you next Sunday. Do something special just for you. I think I have a hammock waiting for me upstairs. And there's nothing that soothes me. And he knows he always puts a little string on it so I can rock myself. 
Yes, yes, yes. We all have our little go-to things. So take good care of yourself, everyone. Do something special just for you. Stay nice and safe and happy. And I will see you Thursday and next Sunday, same time. Bye. And Susan, it was so beautiful to have you back. You're so beautiful. And let me see. Oh, yeah, I think Sue Smith is high. Hi. Uh-oh. Susan, I'm wondering if you're sending it to the wrong email. But please send it to our time to quilt at TWC.com because I answer every email that's sent to me. Okay, sweetheart? Try that again because I want Sue Smith. I want her to get them. Hmm. It is so good to see you. We've been missing you, but I definitely will send them to you. I promise. And if you belong to our group's IO, let me know in there. And I've got them already posted in there, too. So hang in there with me, Sue, because I, I do respond to everybody's. Sometimes the emails, when I hit reply, if your email is just off in that automatic reply, you won't get the answer. So what I tell people sometimes is... Um, write, type out your email in the body of the email because sometimes people make a mistake when they put it, when they set up their account. And if one letter is wrong, when I hit reply, it'll send it to the wrong email address. So retype it in there just so I can double check it because I want you to have these free patterns. I get so excited when people ask for them. Take good care. And check out Ricky Tim's Kaleidoscope. I think I might work on that this week. All right. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great week. Thank you, Susan. You are the best. Bye-bye, guys. Happy birthday, Nikki. Bye-bye, guys. You're the best. <laughs>